You're listening to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, Season 1, Episode 3, How to Effectively Communicate with Your Virtual Assistant. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Ash. Thanks again for tuning in to Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. And today we're continuing with Season 1, Episode 3, How to Effectively Communicate with Your Virtual Assistant. One thing that I've picked up over the past five years of working with a remote or virtual team is that communication is even more important with a remote team than it is with a team that shares a similar office. Unlike the office-based teams, a virtual team doesn't have the ability to make eye contact or have body communication, and it makes it a lot more difficult at times to stay on the same page and make sure that you keep good morale in your team. So I've dedicated this episode to giving some of my tips on how I've learned to effectively communicate with my virtual assistants and virtual staff, and I hope you find this valuable on your own team. Also, remember, I've created a home base for you at libertyentrepreneurs.com forward slash season and the number one. There, you'll find all of the podcasts in season one, as well as the full show notes to accompany each episode. So without further ado, let's jump right in and find out how I effectively communicate with my virtual staff. Okay, so you've hired a virtual assistant and you're ready to take your business to the next level. Delegating tasks, freeing up time, having someone to regularly brush ideas off. This is a clear improvement. That said, just because you hire someone doesn't mean that you're going to build effectively at the beginning. So communication is the key. Follow these next 10 steps, and I think that you'll be able to create a healthy and inclusive virtual work environment and build trust and respect throughout your team. Remember, you're there to set the example. You're the captain of the ship. So number one, build trust by getting to know your virtual team on a personal yet professional level. You know, ask them about their hobbies or why they wanted to become a virtual assistant what it's like living in the Philippines or wherever they're from, and what was like life before they became a virtual assistant. Ask them what they like to do on the weekends and in their free time. Maybe it's photography or swimming or running, who knows? I found it best to view your virtual assistant as someone who could come in and work with you every day in an office. And just like a physical office, your virtual team needs to have open communication and sometimes non-business, small talk, water cooler type conversations can really help. Number two, ask for their opinions. Even though this may be your first time having a virtual team member, it is most likely not your VA's first time. Especially if you found your virtual assistant through libertyvas.com, then all three of your top VA finalists have had previous experience and might even be more experienced with certain tools or processes than you are. So ask for their feedback and what potential hurdles they see. All good relationships are mutually beneficial. Number three, be flexible with their schedule. Stuff comes up, family emergencies, pet problems, internet outages, cultural traditions and holidays that you're not familiar with. Gotta take your kid to school. Maybe they get sick. Working from home means flexibility and freedom. Yes, I know everybody has a schedule and we need certain things done at a certain time. Some of my virtual assistants know that certain days in the week, they don't have a flexible schedule. Other days, they have more of a flexible schedule. Also, you most likely work a flexible schedule yourself and it's recommended to extend the same benefit to your virtual team. My VA staff will request to come in late or early and will always send me a message when they start. If they can't make it in a morning shift that they normally work, then they'll say, hey, is it okay if I put in one or two hours in the morning and then finish the rest of my shift in the afternoon? You know, I've got, I need to take my son to school. They have a party today or it's his birthday or something like that. This is one of the best ways to earn trust and respect from your virtual staff. Number four, be patient and understanding. Working with a virtual team in different time zones and different cultures can be very demanding. Without eye contact or body language, things can be taken out of context and easily misunderstood. Giving your VA the benefit of the doubt when they don't complete a task 
exactly as you expect is a great learning experience for you and the VA if both of you are able to stay patient. Number five, stay humble and ask for constructive criticism. Your VA is experienced and can give you feedback on a wide array of topics. Remember, they may have more experience than you in certain areas and can essentially give you advice and feedback that you wouldn't be able to get otherwise. Instead of hiring a coach, try at first asking your VA on how you can improve and become a stronger leader in your company or your field. Or maybe they have some ideas about how you can improve your products or your services. As long as you're willing to stay humble and ask for feedback, the business relationship with your virtual assistant will bloom. Number six, ask for confirmation. If you have a high priority task that you need to focus on, or you have some really important information to discuss, ask your virtual assistant to confirm that they understand and have no questions. Try to always create a safe environment for questions so that everyone is on the same page. Getting confirmation from your VA is essential to eliminating wasted time and all too often miscommunications. Number seven, give compliments and praise when appropriate. Who doesn't like being told that they're doing a good job? If your VA is impressing you with their work, then let them know. It's important to have a healthy mix of praise and constructive criticism when building a virtual team. Don't just bring up the difficult moments, but enjoy and celebrate when things are going really well. All too often, only the squeaky wheel gets the grease and celebrating wins with your team is a bonus. Number eight, ask your virtual team to create tasks for you. So not only will this keep you better organized, but also show that the task delegation goes both ways. This helps remove the feeling of superiority that often plagues the management and staff relationship. Using a project management tool like Asana, I found to be very helpful. They can quickly jump into Asana, create a task for you, assign it, and then let you know. Even sometimes whenever I'm on a conference call or a phone call with my virtual team, I'll, I'll say something like, Hey, Dex, can you create a task for me, please? So I'm reminded to do that and I'll get that quote card created for you soon. Number nine, share the same playing field. Your virtual assistant sees you as their client. And this is important. You see them as part of your staff, which they are, but they see you as their client. They've had several clients before you and you are their current client. Remember, you both work for each other. Again, Try to set a more level playing field instead of some hierarchy. Nobody likes feeling below someone else, and it's just not necessary and can easily create resentment. If you want to be respected, then you must show that you are able to respect. And number 10, ask your virtual team how you can help them or if there's anything holding them back from completing their tasks. I end every single call with this question. You can ask anyone on my staff. Is there anything I can do to help you? And is there anything holding you back from accomplishing your tasks? As an entrepreneur, you're always looking for feedback from your clients and staff. Your virtual assistant, if given the opportunity, can be a great source of learning and growth for you and your business. Ask them what's holding them back, what's annoying them, or what's a source of frustration. Have you assigned them a task that they just hate? Even questions like, what tasks do you really enjoy? And which tasks do you feel that you're just pushing through? I found to be very, very helpful. You're there to support each other while you both build your business. So again, I'll just rattle them off. Number one, build trust by getting to know your VA on a personal but professional level. Number two, ask for their opinions. Number three, be flexible with their schedule. Number four, be patient and understanding. Number five, Stay humble and ask for constructive criticism. Number six is ask for confirmation to ensure that you're both on the same page and have a common understanding. Seven was give compliments and praise. Eight was ask your virtual staff to create tasks for you. Nine, share the same playing field. There's no hierarchy here. Everybody's working for, towards the same goal. And number 10, ask your virtual staff how you can help or what, if anything, is holding them back from completing their tasks. All right, well, I hope that this has been valuable for you. 
You know, it's very difficult at times to communicate with a virtual team that you never get to meet who has English as their second language and who is culturally different than you. I really think if you write these down or visit the website, uh, libertyentrepreneurs.com forward slash S01 E03 for season one, episode three. You can go check out all the show notes. I've got all 10 of these points here that you can read them again and send it to your virtual team as well. See what they think. Get their feedback and see how they prefer to communicate with solid communication and effective methods for communicating. You will be able to build more than you ever imagine with a virtual team. Remember, we all work from home and we all work virtually because of the freedom that it provides us in our own individual life. And you can help create more freedom in both your life and in your team's life by being a better and more effective communicator. Thanks for listening to season one, episode three, how to effectively communicate with your virtual assistant. If you like this podcast and you appreciate this episode, please share it on social media, Facebook and Twitter, especially subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher radio, TuneIn radio, YouTube, We've got it all in the show notes, how you can subscribe and help us out by leaving a review. And if you really like the podcast, go leave us a review on iTunes. It helps out so much. It builds credibility on iTunes and makes us more searchable in their engine. So thanks again. If you're interested or you want to know more about hiring a virtual assistant, please contact us at info at libertyentrepreneurs.com. Or you can send a message to apply at libertyvas.com. Until next time, episode four coming at you next week. Keep building freedom.